This is not a story about defining someone by their past. This is a story about hope. The people judge you on where you're at now. If they want to hold on to uh, your past, well, then it's really up to them. But a lot of my friends today, they've accepted my past and they take me for what I am today. This is Martin Cooper, a visible figure in South Auckland. Amongst his peers, he's a success story, proof that even against the odds, you can turn your life around. I was placed in care from the age of 13. I probably was placed with about half a dozen different families. Back in those days, um, there was only two gangs here. Uh, there was the, the mob and the blacks. Actually, a couple of my uh, foster brothers, they were in the black power. And uh, that's how I got tied up with them. They gave me a sense of belonging. You went out and you sort of, uh, you know, it was that uh, camaraderie. Martin was moved around in state homes as a child, something he had in common with others in his new gang whānau. Do a lot of people who join gangs have similar background stories and upbringings? Yes, you know, there's a similar background. So they've been uh, taken in by the state. There's been violence in their lives. You know, I needed some, you know, some support, some whānau support. Um, so off I went. And up to the pub, up to the Star Hotel in Nauruhu, Nauruhu, and uh, sort of uh, I linked up with the president there. Yeah, I was introduced to the world of sort of few Black Power presidents at that time, but then there was this, this one president that was there at that time. You know, I met him, and he said to me, Oh, can you count? And I go, and I go, Oh, yeah, and he goes, Oh, what's one plus one? And I say, Three, and he said, Oh, you got the job. He can be the treasurer. Oh, I'm just taking off a uh, copy of a program off the uh, computer. Yeah, so I played uh, some major roles in the Black Power. I played the, uh, the Black Power Auckland chapter. I played uh, the secretary and the treasurer, and then I was the stand-in president. From school dropout to climbing up the Black Power ranks, eventually the crime world would catch up with Martin. Yeah, I was setting up a Mount Eden prison there uh, one night in my in my cell, and then uh, you know what uh, what hit me is my my little babies come and visit me. They come and visit me up in the, in the prison, and then it was at that point where I had to review my 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 life because uh, I wasn't a very good role model for them. I walked out of Mount Eden prison in 1983, and uh, I gave everything up. I stopped drinking. No more drugs. No violence. That's when I turned my life around. For many gang members and those leaving prison, connecting into a new world without crime is a daunting prospect. Martin found his calling reconnecting with his taha Māori. I started going back to my marae. I started getting involved with the marae. I started to uh, learn te reo. Then I started to um, uh, reconnect with the kaumatu up here. I suppose we're the ones that sort of got me on track. I was fortunate enough to be taught by them. And I, I suppose that's the things that I'm in Apoli today, a lot of their teachings. Martin's reconnection to Te Ao Māori has made him a prominent figure in his South Auckland community. He sits on the boards of many marae and is a part of the Kingitanga Brigade. I organise our kaumatua up here, as well as a few marae boards, also Manereo marae, Te Puiya, and uh, Muma. A lot of these fellas here, a lot of them know my background, and uh, a lot of them have followed me over the years. There are you know, my supporters who have watched my development over the years. How do you think your life would have turned out if you didn't reconnect with uh, your culture and tikanga Māori and te reo Māori? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know where I would have ended up. Could have been anywhere. If you don't see yourself progressing, then uh, you, you just stay where you are. I suppose I saw more potential in myself. In another part of the country, sisters Biddy and Raywin have also come a long way. I was with the mob 
but Raywan was with. <laughs> I was so my ex was a um, old founder of the Black Power. Growing up, I was probably hung around with every gang there was. To understand how far they have come, it's important to go back to where it all began. You and your sister used to actually live on the streets. Yes, yes. Uh, I was uh, 13 and she was 10. We stayed in a factory. Uh, we went to the spacey parlour that's now a laundry mat, and we stayed on the streets for over six months. Why, why would you guys uh, go into the streets at such a young age? Uh, abuse. They look for all sorts. There were sexual abuse and violent abuse. Born in Ford Block in Rotorua, the sisters ran away here to Otahuhu in South Auckland. You haven't been here for a while? Nah, for, yeah, for, for years, like over, I'm 52 now, so yeah. I was 13. Um, I've driven past and things like that, but not actually walked here. You were talking about it would have been a tough time for your mum when you guys ran up to Auckland. Yeah, it was hard for mum. Mum came up, um, I ran off, my sister ended up um, getting caught and going back with the sisters. I think mum was really freaking out. Um, I, I was gone for around six months. And she was really sad that I had gone. So why did you two join gangs? For me, we grew up around it. So in the block, we had around six different chapters. Um, so that was part of our environment. That was our everyday look. When you looked out, you just saw gangsters all the time. And the brotherhood and the sister looked, sisterhood that I saw looked inviting. For Betty, she's come full circle from the gang life she once lived. I saw myself like a mongrel. I became a mongrel. I wanted to prove to the mongrels, yeah, you call yourself a mongrel? Oh, I'll show you what a mongrel is. And because I was a woman and already had got the bash and knowing they didn't get the bash on the weekly thing. So that, that way of thinking was quite, uh, my wairua was really kinnel. And, and I didn't realise how, how bad I had got. I went into prison for three months when I was um, 17 and I got out on my 18th birthday. So um, I ended up in Auckland with um, the Black Power up here and um, just lived in that life. I ended up still in the world with, in the gang life and drug life and um, until I um, lost my kids, I was at rock bottom then. Um, I was on methamphetamine, um, had lived the life of um, transferring between everyone that was in a gang. I was someone who would stand over people and use gang members to stand over people. Don't do it. But her and the sisters' prayers were answered. They found a new whānau through the controversial Destiny Church. It has a track record of helping other former gang members. Both sisters are now facilitators in Legacy, the wahine version of Man Up. I am now a facilitator in Legacy in Papakura, helping other women and empowering them. From being in the gang life, drug life and dealing over like my whole life, I was on drugs for 30 years uh, since I was 11 years old. Now I've become um, a good mother. I got my kids back in five months. Um, I've been clean five, five years now. I am a drug and alcohol addiction service worker, so I work in with lived experience. Now I'm going into those people that I used to um, hang out with in the gangs and helping them. The sisters have come a long way, and they hope that others out there who are in the same situation as they once were understand it's never too late to turn your life around. And it, my, the dream's are a lot bigger now. My future's a lot bigger. I actually think limitless now. My life has really flipped the script right around. I never realised it, but I am the hope for a lot of people. Come mo te wehi. Congratulations to these two wahine for flipping the switch to give themselves those bigger dreams. That was Hikurangi Jackson with tonight's programme, edited by Mina Silipa and filmed by Greg Riwai and Tatsuya Sasaki.